Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it's a pleasure to follow the member for uh, Rystip Northwood and his very pleasant reference to the late Ray Davis, who was a wonderful campaigner all of, all of his life. This is a truly appalling piece of legislation that's put before us, and this fits into the bigger picture of uh, anti-democratic legislation that this government has put forward that reduces the right of free speech and assembly, that over-empowers the police, that restricts trade unions and tries to criminalise people who seek a place of safety and asylum on our shores. And so we have to put it in the context of yet another attack on the civil liberties of people in this country. Over 70 organisations have expressed deep misgivings and opposition to this bill. Muslim organisations, Jewish organisations, trade unions, human rights organisations, libertarian organisations, religious groups and many, many others have just said this bill is wrong and this bill will damage the civil liberties of everyone in this country. It gives massive power to the Secretary of State, massive power to the Secretary of State effectively to decide what local authorities can say, think or do. And if a local authority, for example, decided it wanted to speak up about human rights in a country where there is a significant number of people from that country living in their community, for example, there's a very large Somali community in my constituency, would my local authority be not allowed to say anything about Somalia under this bill? They'd have to seek the permission of the Secretary of State before they could do anything. And so it goes on with so many <coughs> others. And uh, having been in this House... Uh, since the 1980s, I sat through many, many debates about South Africa. And there were many members over there, many, who supported the apartheid regime, yeah. openly supported the apartheid regime, called Mandela a terrorist, asked for the banning of the ANC in this country. And the ANC had its offices in my borough, SWAPO, South West Africa People's Organisation, which led to the liberation of Namibia, had its offices in my constituency. There were calls to ban them. And when local authorities, such as Sheffield, led the way on local authority action of, in opposition to apartheid, they faced sanctions from the government. And so why were they so concerned about it, other than to prevent any effective, peaceful loyalty and support to the people of South Africa who were facing the horrors of the apartheid regime. And so, under this piece of legislation, what we did over South Africa would be impossible or yeah. illegal, yeah, yeah. and so you would then end up then suspending councillors, prosecuting local authorities, surcharging councillors. I'm not quite sure where it would lead to. Those of us that um, supported the people of Chile after General Pinochet had seized power and called for a boycott of Chilean goods and non-investment policy in Chile, again would be illegal, on a much more uh, a different basis. Those of us that called for the boycott of Californian grapes during the time that the Californian grape pickers were facing such oppression from the police forces in California, again, would be illegal. Or of all of the issues around the world we're faced with, such as Indonesia's behaviour in West Papua, such as the um, failure of Morocco to allow a uh, referendum on the future of the Western Sahara, such as Saudi Arabia and its war against Yemen. Any expression of that would be banned by this piece of legislation. This is a terrifying bill that's been put forward here today. Now, in most of it has been framed around uh, Palestine and Israel. Well, there are many groups in Israel, many groups, who are frightened by this particular piece of legislation and what goes with it, and also believe there should be justice for the people of Palestine. I spent Saturday evening talking to Mustafa Bakuti of the Palestine National Initiative, who believes in non-violent resistance to the occupation. Non-violent resistance to the occupation. And he pointed out to me, and I noted the figures down as he was talking, at the moment on the West Bank there are 150 settlements. 70 more settlements are being planned or actually built at the present time. And that there are over 400,000 people, Israeli people, that have been moved into those settlements. And it is impossible for Palestinian people to move around their own area of land. And so the idea that the products made on those settlements that are sold outside should somehow or other 
be seen as legitimate products. They're illegal within terms of international law. They're illegal within terms of EU law. And so I would just ask that we understand the importance of the right of protest. And I just finish with this point. Today in Janine, as an example of the occupation, there are in Janine 14,000 people in a refugee camp that is less than 0.4 square kilometres. 14,000 people in less than half a square kilometre of land. And the Israeli Defence Force saying, says it's not targeting civilians. It's impossible to use any kind of weaponry against the population there without targeting civilians. More have died, more bitterness, more hatred, and more problems come down the road. Those people all around the world who want to support the Palestinian people are not anti-Semitic. They're not anti-Israeli groups, but what they do want is justice for the Palestinian people. That surely would be a much better and much stronger message to send out from this house today, rather than the attempt to close down free speech in this country. Yeah. Richard Berger. Thank you, Madam Deputy.